critical race theory is making headlines, especially critical race theory in K-12 schools. But what is critical race theory? And why are some states banning it? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to help us win the YouTube algorithm game. You'll also be the first to watch new episodes every week. Parents, are you having a difficult time figuring out how to have the talk with your kids? You know, the talk. That's right, the talk about how racism is a systemic problem embedded in every facet of American society and history. It's hard as a parent to know how to bring these things up. But don't worry, you're not alone. There's someone who can help. It's your local public school. They'll teach your kids the three R's, reading, writing, and racism. That's right, all the work is done for you by the teachers and school administrators. All you have to do is sit back, turn off your brain, and relax. Critical Race Theory, coming soon to a school near you. Seriously though, Critical Race Theory might actually be coming to a school near you. K-12 schools across the country are increasingly adopting programs with names like anti-racist pedagogy, culturally responsive teaching, equity education, and if it's white, it ain't all right. Just kidding about the last one. But the others are real. All of these programs are based, in some form, on something called critical race theory. And as these ideas are pushed more and more in K-12 education, some people are getting concerned. So concerned that Idaho recently passed a law banning critical race theory in schools. So did Tennessee and Oklahoma. And a lot of other states are debating similar bans on critical race theory, or the teaching of so-called divisive concepts in K-12 schools. Those states include Georgia, Arkansas, South Dakota, Utah, Arizona, New Hampshire, Iowa, Louisiana, Missouri, Rhode Island, West Virginia, and of course Texas. Basically everywhere with decent barbecue, plus Rhode Island and New Hampshire. That's not a short list of states. So I guess it makes sense that USA Today is calling the sudden bloom of critical race theory bills and headlines a national debate. Meanwhile, The Atlantic is calling it a GOP obsession. And your Uncle Jimmy is calling it commie lefty deep state brainwashing. It's true the bills banning critical race theory or divisive concepts are all being proposed by Republicans. And some people are saying the new Republican focus on critical race theory is bogus. They're calling the Republican view of critical race theory a boogeyman, a phantom, and a monster under the bed. Basically how Republicans view Hillary Clinton. So is critical race theory a real threat or just a boogeyman? I mean, what even is critical race theory anyway? I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. So what is critical race theory? Let me give you the short version. Critical race theory is a framework for looking at everything that happens in society. Ideologically, it's a derivative of Marxism. It views all of society through the lens of social conflict. So wait a second, what does Marxism have to do with anything? You see, Marxism is about a lot more than just the idea that the state should control the means of production and everyone gets an equal share. That's only one small piece of it, even smaller than the bread ration people got in the Soviet Union. Marxism is a broader philosophy. Karl Marx wrote that the entirety of human history must be viewed as class struggle between groups of people. In Marxism, there is no such thing as a win-win situation. For one group to win, another group has to lose. That's because every form of society is based on oppressing and oppressed classes. Well, at least until the People's Revolution upends the status quo, then the groups switch places with the Marxists on top. And when they come to power, they never oppress anyone else. They only create utopias. 
For example, critical race theory adopts the idea of class struggle from Marxism and applies it to race instead of class. In other words, critical race theory is not the bourgeoisie oppressing the proletariat. It's white people oppressing people of color, and it views racial struggle as the driving force in human history. After, of course, survival, reproduction, and trying to prove your dad was wrong about you. I'll show you, old man. I'll show you. Sorry, that's actually critical dad theory. Critical race theory has led to things like the 1619 Project. It's a revisionist view of history that America was founded not on the Declaration of Independence in 1776 that called for freedom. No. America was founded in 1619, the year the first slaves were brought over, because slavery and racial struggle, not freedom, is the foundation of America. There are lots of definitions of critical race theory out there, but most share one thing. Systemic racism is an inherent, deeply rooted part of American society. Something kind of like this. You may notice that in this vision, the most likely remedy to fix all of society is a chainsaw. You may also notice that in this vision, those that benefit the most from racism are squirrels. No wonder they can walk on power lines. It's all that white privilege. At any rate, Marxism says that you cannot achieve your goals through reform or healing. No. They can be attained only by the forcible overthrow of all existing social conditions. Critical race theory adopts this idea and applies it to completely dismantling American institutions it sees as inherently racist, like the police. The basic idea of racial power struggle has been around for a long time, and in a lot of different forms, including ones that are uncomfortable to talk about. But all this wasn't specifically called critical race theory until the 1970s, and at that time it was just an obscure university-level course you took if you were desperate to add credits that semester. But over the last few years, it's gotten a facelift. It's been rebranded as anti-racism by scholars like Ibram X. Kendi, author of How to Be an Anti-Racist, and Robin DiAngelo, author of White Fragility, both best-selling books. According to anti-racism, any unequal outcome for non-white people in the United States is a sign of the ingrained effects of white supremacy culture. So white supremacy culture is the reason Joe Biden, who is white, won the Democratic nomination, instead of one of the non-white candidates like Elizabeth Warren. Anti-racism had a surge in popularity beginning in about 2018, when it started showing up in work training sessions and school curricula for younger and younger students. It became even more common in 2020, after the killing of George Floyd sparked nationwide, mostly peaceful, protests. The rapid spread of critical race theory led former President Trump to ban its use in federal training sessions in September of 2020. Biden rescinded the ban on his second day in office. It was part of Biden's undoing of all things Trump, except the thing about having a really old white guy with sexual assault allegations against him in the Oval Office. That thing's harder to undo. Uh -huh, just wait. But many states didn't agree with Biden's undoing of Trump's policy. Imagine states not agreeing with the president's decision. And then, Biden's education department offered grants to schools using certain critical race theory ideas, like the 1619 Project and Kendi's book How to Be an Anti-Racist. And that brings us back to the states banning critical race theory in 2021. Many of the state's Republicans see themselves as continuing what Trump started, trying to stop the spread of Marxist ideas. Although Texas failed pretty hard at stopping Marxist ideas when they had those really long food lines last year. The Republicans behind the bills banning these teachings in schools argue that critical race theory is un-American political propaganda that stokes racial division. They say it promotes the narrative that America is an inherently racist, evil country, when it isn't. Supporters of critical race theory in schools argue that making students aware of systemic racism and how to fight it is necessary to counter the effects of systemic racism. 
They say current education models promote a whitewash narrative that America is flawless when it isn't. So, both sides want to stop racism. But conservatives see anti-racism as, in fact, racist. And progressives see everything as racist. While actual racists see everything through hoods. At least they're wearing masks, I guess. So what does it look like for schools to teach critical race theory or anti-racism? Why all the hullabaloo? I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. Let's take a look at a few examples of how critical race theory is actually taught in schools. In New York City, the private Manhattan Grace Church High School was separating students into racially segregated affinity groups for discussions and holding mandatory racially segregated meetings. Since critical race theory is centered around racial conflict, it sees racial segregation as the only way to protect oppressed races from being further harmed by the oppressor races. It also supports the idea that different races need to be taught different things because the races have inherently different experiences in society. So, the school segregated students by race to give them an education that was separate but equal. Yes, it seems like they tried so hard to not be racist, they circled all the way back around to being racist. And at this school, any disagreement with critical race theory was carefully monitored and suppressed. In emails, some faculty were suggesting teachers officially flag students who appear resistant to the culture we are trying to establish, including persisting with a colorblind ideology, suggesting we treat everyone with respect, a belief in meritocracy, and just silence. In other words, if Martin Luther King Jr. was in that class, and he said people should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, he'd be carefully monitored and suppressed. In this atmosphere, some students at Manhattan Grace Church High School told their math teacher, Paul Rossi, that they felt afraid to challenge the anti-racist curriculum. So Rossi spoke up for them at a whites-only student and faculty Zoom meeting. And he did something truly despicable. He asked questions, hoping to start a discussion. Afterwards, school administrators denounced him as racist in front of the entire school. Ultimately, Rossi published a letter of objection against anti-racist education. And then he was fired. To recap, a math teacher thought the addition of critical race theory divided the school. And when he spoke up, he was subtracted from the faculty. At least he was still teaching kids math. Meanwhile, in Loudoun County, Virginia, the school district developed a 22-page plan to combat systemic racism. Here's what it looked like in action. Tell me what, what this seems to be a picture of. It's just two people chilling. Right, just two people. There's nothing more to this picture? Nah, not really. Just two people chilling. I don't believe that you believe that. I, I'm, I'm confused on what you would like me to, to speak I don't, on in that I don't sense. think you are. I don't know why you do this. Um, I'm not trying to call you out, but you, could, you, 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 know, you come out off of mute to talk about what this is a picture of, and you act as if, as if you know, there's nothing noticeable about this apart from the fact that there are two people. Well, I'm confused. Are you trying to get me to say that there are two different races in this picture? Yes, is that I what you want to say? say? Well, at the end of the day, wouldn't that just be feeding into the problem of looking at race instead of just acknowledging them as two normal people? No, it's not because you you can't not look at you can't like, you can't look at the people and not acknowledge that there are racial differences, right? Come on, kid, quit being so racist and judge those people by the color of their skin already. The Washington Post described the teacher as growing increasingly frustrated. Many parents in Loudoun County saw the teacher's behavior as hostile. But other parents thought the parents who saw the teacher as hostile were hostile. And I think the parents who thought the parents who saw the teacher as hostile were hostile are racist? Am I doing critical race theory correctly here? 
Anyway, some parents started a private Facebook group called Anti-Racist Parents of Loudoun County. They used it to compile a list of parents who disagreed with them. One member asked volunteers to expose these people publicly and asked for hackers who can either shut down their websites or redirect them to pro-critical race theory slash anti-racist informational web pages. There was no evidence any hacking ever occurred, but the list was made. The leader of the group, Beth Bartz, was thrilled. Thank you for stepping up, she wrote. Silence is complicity. Making an enemies list of people who disagree with you? Who do these folks think they are? AOC? Now let's zoom across the country to Democracy Prep Charter School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Gabriella Clark is suing the school because her son, William Clark, was compelled to participate in public professions of his racial, religious, sexual, and gender identities, and would be labeled as an oppressor on these bases. Gabriella Clark and her son, William, are black. Despite this, because William is white passing and declined to participate in confessional exercises and assignments, he was punished. Black people who are white passing are oppressors. Does that mean you're not an oppressor if you're white, but black passing? Like Justin Trudeau. Guess that was so racist it circled all the way back around to being not racist. And over in Oregon, the Department of Education has given math teachers an 82-page training manual titled A Pathway to Equitable Math Instruction, Dismantling Racism in Mathematics Instruction. Among other things, the document states that white supremacy culture infiltrates math classrooms in everyday teacher actions. For example, the focus on getting the right answer and requiring students to show their work. So, if you're white and you can't get the right answer, you just suck at math. But if you're black and you can't get the answer right, it's because of white supremacy? And California is adopting that equitable math manual now too. Also in California, in Cupertino, that's where Silicon Valley is, third graders there were asked by a teacher to list their oppressive identity characteristics. Things like race, class, gender, religion, or family structure. And they were told to circle the identities that hold power and privilege. And yet, they were not asked to identify the main way that third graders oppress each other. Farting in lunchboxes. These kinds of things are what led Paul Rossi, the mass teacher in New York, you know, that filthy racist, to argue that my school, like so many others, induces students to identify primarily with their race before their individual identities are fully formed. That's absurd. My identity was already fully formed by third grade. I haven't matured one bit. That's the sound of oppression. The funny thing is, those who want to ban critical race theory and those who want to promote critical race theory actually agree on several things. For one, each side agrees that the other side is promoting racism. They just have different ideas of what racism is. Some see racism as treating people differently based on skin color. Others see racism as being part of systemic power structures that lead to different average outcomes across racial groups. Both sides also agree that the other side is attacking free speech. And there are people on both sides who agree that the other side is suppressing unbiased education and critical thinking. Is there a compromise to be found somewhere in there? Maybe, maybe not. But let's look at the bright side. There are lots of people on each side who hate each other, not for the color of their skin, but for the content of their character. We did it, Dr. King. We did it. So what do you think of these examples of critical race theory in schools? Are states justified in banning it? Let us know in the comments below. Also, America Uncovered is primarily supported by viewers like you. So please, stop by our Patreon page and donate a dollar or more per episode so that we can keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thank you for watching America Uncovered.